Hey guys, Julie here, and I'm with Prince, who's back for a one-week tune-up. And one of his owner's main goals for this week was to get his car behavior back to the way it was when he left his original board and train. She said it slipped a little bit. He's starting to get really overly excited and aroused inside the car, popping up all the time. And I think Prince is the one dog who actually jumped out of a moving car, I think, before training. So he really struggles with arousal issues. And when we talk about arousal, I just mean elevated states of mind when it's not appropriate. If his owner is out in the backyard playing tug with him, that's an appropriate time to be aroused. But it's not appropriate to be overly aroused in the car driving around. So we always use our downstay, okay? So I got him in the car and I told him down. And in Prince's case, I'm holding him accountable for a double down because that really is going to help that little noggin of his stay calm. Now we're going to watch for triggers. So me starting the car is a trigger. That could cause his head to fly up. But that's why we have our e-collar. If at any time he breaks his downstay or I see him start to elevate, I give a click on the collar and it should lower his state of mind back down. This is due to the training that we've done on this collar. You can't just take a collar, throw it on a, a dog who's had no training and expect the same result. So here we go. I'm going to put my seatbelt on. Sometimes that's a trigger. Get that. Get my seatbelt on. And then I'm going to start the car. Good boy. I'm going to reward that state of mind because that's what I like. Good boy. The gear shift, that's another trigger. And then finally, when the car starts moving, that's another trigger. So all it is really is just keeping him calm and we're using the e-collar to do it. Another trigger is going to be stop signs stoplights or going down a familiar path maybe when you're on your way home and the dog knows it those are all opportunities to use the collar for him popping up getting a little too excited and just always remembering to hold him accountable for this state of mind and this position because i know he's capable of it look how calm he is in the car right now and this is just due to the past work that we've done the past couple days reacquainting him with e-collar pressure reassociating him with e-collar pressure another complaint was he would do he would complain when he got corrected and do these like bird call things um and yeah it, it caused his owner to want to stop correcting him so basically what happens is the dog trains the owner hey when you correct me i'm just going to complain about it make it not so fun for you to correct me and so they get away with a lot we train where when you feel a correction that means relax the irony is he's going to be able to do more stuff because he's listening now and he's not going to be breaking commands all the time lunging at people even in a friendly way prince is a friendly guy but he's really big and he's unmanageable at times and she wants to be able to take him to her grandmother's house do lots of things with him so in order to do that we have to maintain calmness unless invited otherwise so basically calm is the default and aroused is when invited playing fetch off leash hiking play sessions only when you invite it though so i just want you to see just how calm he is capable of being in the car when you expect it as a default i haven't had to touch the remote a single time and we haven't even worked on his car behavior really since day one it's the result of living a structured lifestyle waiting at thresholds sleeping in the crate in the crate when they're not home waiting for food place command when they're out structured walks and heel being held accountable for any mistakes it will transform your dog so that they behave better in all situations and that you're not constantly correcting them so we're just driving around using these stop signs as moments to look at him and correct any over arousal but overall he's just doing amazing
Okay, we're coming up on another stop sign. Okay, we're completely stopped. Again, this is where most dogs would pop up and say, where are we? And that starts the cycle. That's why your dog is pulling on the walk. That's why they're breaking command. That's why you can't get them to calm down. It's all in that tiny little moment right there that wasn't addressed. He's practically falling asleep. That's how uh, calm he is. Okay, we're headed back home and the dogs know, even if they're in double downs like this, they know when you're pulling into your driveway. So it's another time to make sure your remote is handy. And as soon as they pop up, you'll just click the remote and, and they'll, they should go back to that down position. Um, but even more so than position, I'm worried about state of mind. So. By keeping him in this nice down state, it's great position-wise, but it's also keeping his mind calm. That's really the reason for it. Turning back on our street. test is going to be pulling into the driveway, stopping the car, getting out of the car. These are all things that I still expect the calm down stay. None of those things um, get to release him. I, the only thing that releases him is me. All right, so we're parking in the driveway. Car is stopped. Gear shift turning the car off. Good boy. Me undoing my seatbelt, opening the door, getting out of the car, opening this door. So if I wanted to, I could still ask for a double down. I'm just going to do a silent click here. Okay, so that was a silent click on the remote, and he knows what to do with it. Prince, break the boy. 